All right, so I was checking out this movie called Old Dads. Let's get to it. So we got this dude by the name of Jack. You know what I'm saying? He's got a wife. He's got a kid by the name of Nate. Got a family, you know, just doing what he do. Then he ends up having a cookout with his best friends, Mike and Connor. Mike's situation, he got two kids in college. He's got an ex-wife talking to his girlfriend. Then we got Connor with his five-year-old son who's just rambunctious at all hell. And his wife, Kara, lets it just run all over him, honestly. But that's what it is. So Jack is picking up his kid one day or whatever like that, but he's two minutes late to pick him up, whatever. He couldn't find a parking spot. Turns out Dr. L, who ends up running his school or like that, she charges him a dollar for every minute that they're late. So then they get into this little argument. He basically ends up blowing up her and ends up calling her the C word. I'm like, boy. So now why is this a big problem? Well, both Jack and his wife are trying to get their kid Nate into a private school or whatever. And Dr. L for that area, her spectrum controls the whole thing on private schools or whatever like that. So bottom line is, yeah, they need to, you know, be nice to her and all this other stuff. And you got this whole city, you know, they're very uppity about whatever. So bottom line, he's got to go back and apologize somehow. So he doesn't feel like it's a problem to going back and apologizing. But the thing about Jack is he has a very, what you call, anger management issues. And he's pretty much got to do whatever he can for like the next three months to be nice to her so she can sign a good recommendation for his son. But Dr. L does not make it easy on him at all. So Jack, Mike, and Connor end up going to this place called Trifecta. Turns out they used to run the company, but now they had to sell the company to this dude by the name of Aspen. So Aspen's coming up with all these like brand new, fresh ideas and all this other stuff. And bottom line is they got to work for under him. So what does Aspen do? He starts off by firing half of the people that are working for him, like the older people, whatever like that. They used to work for Jack, Mike, and Connor for like the last 20, 30 odd years. Not a very good way to ingrace yourself regarding, you know, our, old, our three old heroes over here. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason he's even keeping them three around is because it was their company. So basically, Aspen gets these three on a mission. They got to take some other dude with him, right? So they could go find uh, Ed Cameron. Apparently, he's been off the grid since like 1988. Then they got to convince him to come out of the hiding so that he could get back to the company and like market him or something like that. I guess they end up selling his T-shirts or something. I don't know. On the ride there, they're talking to this other dude. We just go call him JJ or Trent. Let's call him Trent. They have a conversation about stuff, and then they get into the conversation of him talking about music. So then he's like, yeah, I like the Wu-Tang. I like N.W.A. He's like, oh, N.W.A. So Mike is just fucking with him, right, to get him to say, like, you know what I'm saying, sing along the words of N.W.A. Now, obviously, he's not going to try to get him. He's going to try to get him to say the N-word, but he's not going to say it because he shouldn't. So after all that, uh, Jack ends up accidentally running over an armadillo, right? And then who picks up the armadillo? Ed Cameron. Apparently, he was just right there. I'm like, what? <laughs> they somehow convinced him to come back to the company with Aspen. So it's like, all right, there we go. So they did the job right. The problem is Aspen had a camera set up in a rental car and they were saying a lot of, I guess you could say, derogatory things in that car. And because of that, all three of them ended up getting fired. The thing is, Trent ends up getting fired too because after they left, he shows another video about how he had a camera in his house. He was rapping the lyrics to songs and he was saying the N-word multiple times. And I'm thinking to myself, is that an invasion of privacy? You can't just have a camera in somebody's house. So Jack ends up going back to his wife and Nate, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to figure out some things. He's like, I'm going to figure out another way to get another job. This is that. Third. By the way, his wife is pregnant again. So there you go. Mike ends up going back to his girlfriend, Brittany. It turns out she's pregnant. But then he's thinking to himself, how? He had a vasectomy and all this other stuff. So it was like, how did she end up getting pregnant? Mm. So I guess he's kind of having a breakdown, but he's not showing it. But then he's like buying all these other new cars and stuff. I'm like, oh, what is he doing? Connor's just in a situation where Kara controls the entire relationship. It's just ridiculous. Jack and Mike got a heated conversation or whatever like that because of the fact that they got fired. So they haven't really been talking to each other like that. Connor's trying to keep them together, but it's not working. Connor can't really look at Jack in the eye like that. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Well, apparently Hannah and Carla had a heated conversation about how she's, you know, mentoring her kid, making it seem like she's a bad parent or whatnot. So when Jack comes back home, he's thinking to herself, is she fucking Connor? And he's like, of course not. What the hell? Like, and then she gets to explains the situation and everything calms down. Just like, what the fuck? So I guess a couple of months went by. Jack has been trying to figure out some jobs or whatever like that, but he's still trying to help out Dr. L. Now, in between this, she had given him a card to a therapist, some lady by the name of Karen. He, was, he just kept on to that the whole time. Mike has been trying to figure out whether he wants to have another kid or whether he wants to get married to Brittany. So he's been, you know, having a midlife crisis. And Connor's just been stressed because he ain't been able to talk to both of his friends because Kara runs that relationship. But anyway, <laughs> so a while ago, Jack had talked to Dr. L, whatever like that. They set up this thing to have this like a... Uh, teachers a uh, parent kids function or whatever like that so they could raise enough money they got raised like three thirty thousand dollars but they already had twenty thousand so they have this like little auction thing he puts the bidding at like two thousand it starts going up and up and then it stops at like 23 and then he automatically puts up like three thousand dollars or whatever like that thinking that anybody else is gonna uh, bid, outbid him but they didn't so therefore he does it and the winner was supposed to get two hours of talking to dr l so i was like ugh 
So at this point, she started nitpicking with him. And at this point, he's like, yo, he just couldn't take it. He just blew up on Dr. Earl once again. So now they're in debt for $3,000. And his wife is just like, she's so sick of the, the anger management and all this other stuff. She's just tired of it. He tries to come back to the house or whatever like that. But basically, she just wants him to leave because she's stressing out, not knowing if her kid's going to get the recommendation to be in private school. It's just a mess. Here's the point. Jack is living in a motel for like a couple of days. And he goes up going to this uh, restaurant and ends up seeing Mike there. So now Jack, Mike, and Connor are all linked together, and Connor's in the back. He's smoking, co- he's sniffing coke. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> he keeps talking about going to Vegas. They're like, yeah, we're not going to Vegas. We're going to Palm Springs. Like, calm down. They end up going to this casino, but who do they see at the casino? They see Aspen. We're like, what the heck is he doing there? So they're like, are you spending our company money or whatever like that? He's like, yo, I'm just spending a little bit of money. But the thing is, he ended up getting fired, too, because he was selling these Ed Cameron T-shirts or whatever like that. But the problem was they weren't licensed, and it was like all over TikTok, whatever like that. Ed Cameron's got a new lease on life. He enjoys the city. <laughs> It's ridiculous. So they about to get on him, and all of a sudden he starts crying. He's like, man, my girlfriend left me. I can't do that. Whatever like that. So they start feeling a little bit bad for Espen. So then they were going to the strip club spot. Then all of them start getting these realizations, but then Jack gets a call from uh, Kara, whatever like that. It turns out that Hannah's uh, about to have be able to labor. But they're all too drunk to get to the hospital, so they got to call an Uber, and they got this old guy to get them up there. So at the beginning of the movie, when Jack was driving or whatever like that, he always hates these dudes that don't like these roller, roller skates or... Uh, rollerblade like wheel things or whatever like that and then he's like riding around back and forth across the street you're like ew sit down on the sidewalk with that shit but it turns out they get stuck in traffic and they have to end up using these things just to get to the hospital connor ends up finally stepping up to kara showing some type of little bit of dominance in the relationship because it's like she's been walking all over him the entire time mike ends up proposing to britney in the hospital or whatever like that but then she's like uh can we just like take it slow first i don't propose in the hospital like let's go to roof chris or something she's like all right cool as far as Jack goes, he has a baby girl, you know what I'm saying? So now they got two in the family, you know, Nate and a girl. So there you go. And pretty much everything's right in the world. So you know what happens after that? Jack has been going to therapy classes, I guess, a couple of times a week. He's been controlling his anger. Mike ends up suing Trifecta for, like, you know, racial discrimination, whatever like that. By minds, they get their pensions. As far as Dr. L goes, turns out she's been embezzling or whatever like that. She ends up getting arrested. <laughs> I guess everything's right with the world at this point. So there you go. Oh no, it's a pretty hilarious movie. You had Bill Burr who uh directed it. Yeah, Bo King Woodbine, you know what I'm saying? I ain't seen him since like Tupac movies and that strap strap movie and Tupac videos. But anyway, old Edge, check it out on Netflix. Yeah.